Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salam Khan here. And continuing the topic of impulse signal, in which today we see the sampling property or the sifting property. Sampling, or this is also called as the sifting property of the impulse signal. Okay. Now we come through. We come to it through an example. Consider a function. Consider a function. Let's say x of t. This is the time axis, and this is the function x of t. Is that fine? Now, whatever this function is, let's say I need the value of this function at t is equal to tau I need the value at t is equal to tau which means that I require a new function y of t I need a new function let's say y of t which is equal to I only need the value of x of t at tau so which means that this y of t is equal to x of tau at t is equal to tau and it is zero otherwise isn't it so so this is what i require now what do i do i will take the help of impulse signal so as you know the impulse signal is what as I believe this green color is visible as impulse signal. So it is delta t is equal to undefined at t is equal to zero and it is zero otherwise. Let me check if this green color is visible or not. Yes, it is right. It is right. Fine. So have a look for these two signals. They have some similarity. What is that similarity or resemblance? You can say not a similarity, the resemblance. It is that they are defined for a particular value of time and they are undefined, they are zero for rest of the time. So this is the similarity or the resemblance. So we use the help of an impulse signal. Now if I shift the impulse signal, uh, to this value of tau. So this impulse signal is, is located at t is equal to 0. But if I, if I shift the impulse, shift the impulse to tau, which means that I have to right shift it, so which means that a delta of t minus tau. So this would now equal what? It would be undefined at t is equal to tau and it would be zero otherwise. Which means that now I have brought my impulse signal at this particular point. This blue color is representing my impulse. And this value is let's say a. x of t at tau is equal to a let's say. I hope till here we are clear. Now have a look. If I multiply these two signals, if I multiply these two signals, which means x of t is multiplied with delta of t minus tau, so this is equivalent, equivalent of multiplying x the value of x of t at this point which means that x of tau so which means that i could write it as x of tau multiplied delta of t minus tau isn't it so because why did i write it like this so if you have not got it so let's say i go in another way if if you are multiplying two things now this one thing is only applicable over here it is present over here. To the left, the other is 0. So, so if you multiply it, you get a 0. Because this 
impulse is zero over here. So multiply this signal with the zero, you get a zero. Similarly, this impulse is zero to the right side of it. So you multiply this shape with a zero, you get a zero. So the only thing that you get is the value at which this impulse is present. So this impulse is present at t is equal to tau. So you multiply it with x of tau instead of multiplying it with x of t. If you have any confusion, you can ask. Isn't it so? If I give you an example, this is x of t. I need to multiply this marker with it. Now, if I have a hole in this page, so this is the value of tau. This is the value of tau. I'm multiplying, this is t is equal to tau, okay? The hole is x of t, the whole page is x of t, this hole is at t is equal to tau. So if you're multiplying this, so have a look, this is an impulse signal, the marker is an impulse signal. So you're multiplying the impulse signal, well this cannot enter the other, any other area of the page, right? So, which means it can only enter over here, this means that this is the impulse signal multiplied with x of tau, not any other value of x of t because otherwise the impulse is zero. So similar in what I'm trying to explain over here. So, now, now the value of this x of tau is a, right, and the value of this delta of t minus tau is infinite. So you multiply a finite number with a finite number to get an infinite. So this is not what we require. We require what? We require a. We require the value of x of tau. We need to sample x of tau. But we are getting infinity. So this is not our, our approach. This is a wrong approach. So the correct approach is what? You also integrate it. Also integrate this product. Also integrate this product. Which means what? Which means like this. You go from a negative infinity, you can also go to positive infinity. Let's say I write a tau plus. Tau plus to include this tau point, okay? Let's say I go to infinity. If you write a tau plus, you only have to include uh, this tau, okay? Because if you are coming to here, so tau is not included, you don't get anything. So let's say infinity. So you also write x of t now multiplied with delta r of t minus tau. Now what will happen? Now x of t is some constant value. This will come out of the integration. This is d tau, okay? d tau or dt, whatever it is. dt, right? So, uh, now what do you want? So again the same concept, if you write x of tau in place of this x of t, if you are multiplying it with the impulse signal, and x of tau is equal to a, which is a constant value, so let me take it out from here, x of tau, and inside the integration we have delta of t minus tau dt, we know this is equal to 1, so you have x of tau, multiply with 1 and x of tau is equal to a. So have a look, we have sampled. So how do we sample a signal? We multiply the signal with the shifted unit impulse signal. And that's about it, okay? If I write it generally, if I write it generally, so I would write it over here, generally, the sampling property is written as this, uh, x of tau, x of t, multiplied with t minus t naught, this is basically equal to x of, let's say this is tau. This is equal to x of tau multiplied with t minus tau. Fine. And you integrate this to get the final answer. Similarly, you have for the discrete time as well. You have x of n 
multiplied with lambda of n minus n naught let's say and this would equal x of n naught delta of n minus n naught is that okay let's say I have an example let's say I have an example so for which I would have to remove the board okay so for example we have a function given this is t this is x of t it's like this from negative 2 this is 0 then it's constant till 2 2 and this is 3 so 1 is somewhere here and well the value is not given so x of 1 is what we need to find x of 1 so which means we need to sample the point at t is equal to 1 so, so, so what do we mean? We mean uh, over here that tau in our case is equal to 1. Fine. So we would bring the impulse signal to this 1. Which means that now the shifted impulse would be where? Shifted impulse. We need it at 1, okay? So we will have it at t minus 1. This is equal to infinite at t equal to 1 and it is 0. Otherwise, fine. Now what do you have? So you multiply the signal, okay? You multiply the signal you have from negative infinity. You, you go to just about, you go to the positive side of 1. So which means 1 plus. You have x of t and multiplied with sigma of t minus 1 dt. So what would be the case? So now I will put x of tau in this case. You have a negative infinity to 1 plus. You have x of tau and you have sigma of uh, delta of t minus 1 dt. Fine. Now this x of tau is again a constant x of tau is a constant so it will come out of the integration x of tau and you have a negative infinity to 1 plus of delta of t minus 1 dt. Now we know that this is equal to 1 so you only are left with x of tau which is equal to x of 1 and which in this case whatever is the value x of 1 whatever is the value fine so which means that we have sampled out this x of 1 so if this is 1 so you have some value and this is let's say any value you have x of 1 or you have x of tau wait 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 x of tau and have a look for the representation that I took. I took the brackets, okay? So which means that I have formed a discrete time signal. So we can form discrete time signals from continuous time signals with help of unit impulse signal. So that's about it, okay? That's about the sampling property i'll see if i have some uh, example on properties of uh, impulse signal for this lecture that's all see you in the next lecture very soon till then take care goodbye